regional forms. Yeah, nah, I thought I already done that one. Now I've got another 20 of them piping up. All right, with that many spawning, now I have to sort out a follow-up, don't I? Aside from a beta-looking trailer, now I have a beta-looking game to play so I can get a few better angles of them. Nah, the game's actually decent. But it's calm. Hisuian forms are more than worth the separate video. This one's just ranking all the regional forms that are actually relevant. Most regional variants are like, what are they? They're just, oh, what if this Pokemon went on holiday? Or oh, the opposite of holiday. England, Suians aren't just session, not just getting a fresh trim and a sunburn. A lot of them are getting that demigod clout. That I know the guy who runs this place clout. Except that place is the universe. Have to be an elite kind of VIP to have a statue of you sat at the Temple of Sinnoh. The majority of them bang, but I'd say they bang in about this order. So they made a fourth genie. And uh, you know, I'm just happy they didn't make a fourth reskin to the genies. But actually, that, you know, maybe they should have just done that. Enamorous looks like if Maximilian Pegasus yesified one of the genies into a Toon World card. That's not one of the genies, my man. That's an NFT. Enamorous looks like it snitches on the other genies, rats them out to Arceus, catches Tornadus using the powers of the wind to roll himself a fat zoo. And Enamorous has the Azor flu and speed dial like, Oh, Arceus, Arceus, come quick. Tornadus is smoking the guillotine as letters. Never thought I'd see Arceus being so someone's Miss Finster. Now you mention it. I always knew there was some omnipotent correlation there. Once Enamorous snitches, Tornadus probably tries to slap him up afterwards, but it switches to that slightly more salvageable Sky Turtle form. Can look as clapped as it wants, but at least it doesn't look anywhere near as out of place there. If I'm trying to take something away from it, I can see Enamorous as just being a beanbag for the snake who rightfully takes the helm can tell they definitely revealed more of the A side of the forms early on. And maybe it's best if we flex Growlithe a bit first, let them get all riled up on Twitter, save it for when their payments have already gone through, that they get a good look at Horsemeat Palkia. You're a professional cosplayer, but the Pokemon World Championships and BronyCon clash on the same weekend. Just because it's hundreds of years before Diamond and Pearl, that's no excuse to be leaving the placeholders in there. As if Arceus punished Palkia by banishing him to Sid's room for the weekend and came out looking like this, got its arms chewed off by his PlayStation 1 dog, gone all the way from Spear Pillar to having tea with Mrs. Nesbitt. And look at the legs on that. Palkia better watch his step with those. He breaks one of them. Arceus might have to take him out behind Spear Pillar. How are you gonna have the god of space looking like you get hunted down by Joe Rogan? Cyrus went through all that effort to control Palkia. Your man just needed a combat bow and enough DMT to see Palkia in his own living room. The potential was there going for the whole centaur gimmick and if there's one thing I can give them credit for, they actually tried to make it look biblically unsettling. I mean they tried but it looks more randomized to me. Looking like something that should only ever spawn when you're having one of those dreams. You know, the kind where you're in the Ed Ed Neddy cul-de-sac while on planet Namek, helping Hugh Neutron charge the spirit bomb to defeat what your mind probably glitched itself in the thinking is freezer, but your brains just merged Palkia and Gaia the Fierce Knight. This one was saved a bit seeing it in-game fully animated, but that still doesn't change that I'd sooner expect to see this thing in a jar on 4chan than in an official game. Alright, I forgot this one existed. Probably because I don't even think it's a Hisuian form. More like it got that Hisui custom wrap. This might be the only one that did just get a fresh trim. Basculin, I just completely aired. Not much going for the little white striped fish. Doesn't matter what region it's in. Basculin is an old rod licking jabroni everywhere it swims. But it's a necessary jabroni pocketmon for about 300 HP worth of recoil damage at least. All of you Basculin. Masculine, you lot are only there to add to the body count and fuel the summoning of the big fish. Dialga is definitely jarring to look at, but it's nowhere near as bad as Palkia. Don't get me wrong here, it's still a bit clapped looking. That neck says it all. Dialga definitely locals the same pharmacy as Mr. Krabs. It was hard to judge based on the leaked models at first, but from that alone, it was easy to assume the worst because that Dialga is unfinished. Gone so far back in time, my man's legs were rendered for the N64. That boy needs to get back in the mire, get some more edge loops 
groups around them. Sort your lord out. But at least it's still mostly on brand for Dialga. They didn't chuck him down a Sid's room and have him glued onto the body of a lobster and looks very biblically unsettling once it starts shuffling around and you're having a bare knuckle fight with him. Avalug would be so much higher on this if all of them were 100 feet tall or at least realistically scaled and made to be like like whale lord sized or something but if it's not gonna be Gigantamax from birth at the very least you'd think an older version of Avalug would have answered that age-old question Where's the rest of you? But nah, I guess it was always Avalug's destiny to be an on-the-go ice bar. No wonder this Avalug doesn't exist anymore. Not even Evolution could manage some kind of failsafe for when it gets stuck on its back. You'd think it'd be a fossil Pokemon by now with a design flaw that blatant. Don't know how Arceus gave this one that green light when code in the universe. Even when Avalug does local the same region as Arceus, it still slips by quality control. Probably why it's a noble Pokemon to begin with, that lightning was Arceus sending a patch. The only species that could be wiped out with a comically large spatula. Its chances of survival would actually go up if two of them got sandwiched together. The main thing saving Sneasel here is the fact that it's managed to retain almost all of its original design traits from Johto. An interesting interpretation, but they just ripped the Sneasel OC off someone's dead DeviantArt account from 2007 hoping nobody had noticed. Its evolution was the juicy bit of info that dropped, and I had a lot of mixed feelings about Sneasel as a first impression. I just can't get over its preset shape oval head. Sneasel seems like one where you can just tell it'd be a much better better design once it's had proper 2D artwork done for it. But for now, something about it seems like it was modelled by the guy who sorted out Dialga's legs. Luckily for it, that in-game charisma kicked in. I can look past the awkward way it's built when it's got one of those designs that can convey a strong personality. A strong personality, yet somehow terrifying. Accidentally hitting that plus button into Sneasler. I swear, Giratina wishes it could jump scare that well. When Growlithe dropped, it was straight away deemed a universal banger. His Syrian Lilligan isn't exactly breaking Twitter for a few days. For all I know, this wasn't even a secret. They could have put this in every bit of gameplay shown before the release, but it was just chilling in the background, camouflaged by the game's textures. But saying all of that, in all fairness, it's a decent take on changing up the original design, and I'll take something unexpected over the obvious predictable choices any day, because even with something as mostly unasked for as Lilligan, it works surprisingly well as one of the few chosen noble ones. Seems to be no coincidence that Braviary was once a psychic type. Didn't take too long after shifting to Pokemon's America for its brain to get smoother and smoother until its IQ just couldn't quite pay the rent for that psychic type. Got mentally floor buffered. I reckon it's a lot more sleek than the Unova version. Gives it that importance where with a design like this to begin with, it probably should have had from the beginning. Cause you know, with like, I don't know, Unpheasant, obviously, it's just a bird, a pest to car windscreens and chip shop bins. But when you have something that looks like Braviary, it shouldn't be anywhere near the same realm as the rest of these high street menaces. It should have always been a bit more important, like the Hisui forms done here. If I were a Johto trainer, I'd be importing my PC straight to Hisui, Sinnoh, whatever you want to call it. This slab of land is carrying so much of the Johto decks, where those Pokemon go to get serious. Them lakes must be laced with some of the rock sunny D to get all of these undiscovered evolutions. The Johto region had all of this lot gaslit into believing that they're not still growing boys. And out of all of those growing boys that were thirsty for some of that spicy water from the Fortnite guy, Stantler was dying for something like this. The lower half of Palkia might make it look like it'd get hunted down by a 5 foot 3 man, but Stantlers, they actually do. It's barely even a Pokemon. It's only a notch or two higher than the fish in Misty's gym. Only thing making it a Pokemon is how its antlers can apparently distort reality around it. But finally, it actually has those psychic powers the Pokedex has been gaslighting us about for 20 years. Twitter's piped down enough since the first trailers, so with that recency bias hyperside, we can all now confirm Yasuyan Growlithe is a good boy.
He's a damn good boy. Arcanine, it was trying as well. I was hoping it'd be a lot more cloudy. Make it the legendary Pokemon that it's apparently been this whole time. They had a good thing going with the growl of a steak. You know, if the crowd response wasn't loud enough for them. But even though the way they went about it has some missed potential, it's still a pretty decent banger. Being a rock type, they definitely should have leaned into the statue come to life gimmick a lot more. Not just made it look like it's had a long 14 hour shift down in the mines. I've taken enough heat for talking about starter Pokemon. So having to out one of these three as the bronze medal, you know, that's pretty light work for me at this point. But Samurott has to be the one to bear that bronze cross. But not by a long stretch, because somehow they've managed to make all three of them decent enough bangers. I don't think anyone had an easy time choosing a starter this time around. Most difficult starter selection since 1996. Samurott was already a sound enough boy in its base form. So I'd actually say it's a good thing that they didn't do too much to change it. But you know, if they went with that all white shiny form as the main design, that might have actually done me in. I'd have to go back on a lot of my word, because just maybe I'd have willingly wanted an Oshawott for the first time ever. It all makes sense why Ursaring was so mid for the last 20 years. It's been a middle evolution this entire time. Somewhere through the generations, that peak grizzly bear form got lost to time. The Johto region must be easy living. Clearly Ursarings these days aren't getting bullied enough for evolution to pipe up. Johto region's so safe, most of the Pokemon there reverted backwards and had baby forms. They've started to settle down and have families. No wonder it's been stuck in a mid form this whole time. Half the sparring partners ask to choose from a toddlers. But looking at Ursaluna makes you realize that there's never really been any proper grizzly bear Pokemon. Ursaring's the closest we had, but your man's leaning more towards the yogi side of bear than grizzly. Ursaluna is much more like it. We've been missing out on a mountable mountain bear this entire time. How are you going to tell me this whole time Ursaring somehow forgot to reach this form? It evolves from a full moon and a few Scooby snacks. Seasoned with a bit of bog juice of course. Teddy Ursa had the evolution guidebook tattooed on its head this whole time. Actually I should be fair here. The guidebook instructions do get a bit lost in translation once it becomes Ursaring. That belly ring making it look more like a target practice for muck punches. Not everyone's gonna interpret that as ring of the moon. Maybe its stomach needed the iconic big red clickbait arrow with yellow text going across him saying insert peaked blocks. When I first saw his Suian Voltorb, all I could think about was how much does that thick monobrow get in the way of rolling around? Agility is what pays for the electric for Voltorb and Electrode. That has to be quite the nerf having a speed bump welded to your forehead. But clearly, having a 3D monobrow hasn't got Voltorb pressed at all. Look at this happy little goon. No idea what they started putting in the new Pokeballs to make the modern pair such a threat to humanity. What you'd see as C4 cannonballs today were once this friendly little little lads. Go back a few hundred years and the all-natural vegan Voltorb is looking like the family pet. I'd gladly take him out for a daily roll around the park, but this breed, don't get it twisted, this breed can still be dangerous. I'll blame the owners, no, I'll blame the owners personally. Potentially harmful species needs proper discipline. You see, if any signs of the Cantonian urge to self-destruct around a group of innocent kids starts to kick in, I'll be pouring vinegar in its hole. But sadly, there isn't enough vinegar in the world to condition this species to go against what it's always destined to be. Fuming. I'll rate the electrode form as well. Even though it looks like it really wants to use all 150 points of its speed, all 4 feet of its height, and all 156 pounds of its body weight to break every bone below my areolas. I just, I just don't know what it could be. There's something, something just happens mid-evolution to make the wee man suddenly become an angry bull. Probably from all that vinegar I poured in it. Chestnut gets overlooked enough already next to the other grass starters. Now one of the most popular ones is gonna finesse that one unique trait it had going for it. An unexpected type change when Decidueye already had the most unique starter typing. Ghost and Grass Decidueye is a high bar to live up to. So from the very beginning, it's like they've booked themselves into a corner. Seems like no matter how they change Decidueye, it's gonna be a wrong answer. But as it turns out, Kitana and Fedora, 
Yeah, nah. Ronan Hat and MMA, that's the play. Apparently making it mortal actually banged. How are you gonna be the best samurai in a lineup with Samurai? A good amount of Hisuian forms seem to be literal pseudo legends. None of that 600 base stack kind. Except Gudra, he's doubling up. Along with one of the most resistant dual types, a type combination only worthy enough for the God of Time and the fridge-sized Zippo lighter. Those resistances and pseudo-legendary stats is asking for Gudra to be a complete weapon. Sadly for the Sligu and Gudra pair, that steel type is looking like a weapon to themselves. Looking like that type comes at the cost of mercury poisoning. I guess Gumi is safe apparently. It might not have the Husui form, but definitely gonna have a Gumi pacifist form. That boy's gonna be staying home, keeping itself sheltered straight from the egg, living that level one, zero experience lifestyle. Gumi isn't starting beef of anyone. Never know when that next slither of experience is gonna turn him into a sligu, give him that steel type death sentence. Then you'd have the Gumis who are just fed up, eating rare candies in bulk. Just, just take me now, Arceus. Come on, you just live down the road. For as depressed as these two seem to look, they're looking pretty good too. Mercury poisoned hyper clingy Gudra and sligu. That's a mad set of regional forms that they'd actually go for. With all these videos I've done, I'm actually surprised at myself that I've never thought of anything along the lines of Cleaver. It's a perfect blueprint, really. Take any Mon which is physically weaponized and see how they turn out with a different weapon to base them on. Cleaver is a banger take on that concept. I'm all for the ciphers and Kabutops of the realm getting these weapon add-ons. Give Kabutops a pair of maces to swing about. Give Hitmon Lee a pair of steel toe caps. How about a Glaswegian High Street Bishop form where its arms are two giant screwdrivers? Not everyone's gonna want a third wheel tagging along on a pair of fan favourites, but I for one welcome the Lumberjack Bionicle. The only thing that really saves how Typhlosion can look is the flames coming off of his traps. One of the biggest L's taken shifting to 3D. This man got exposed to some dirty angles. 3D Typhlosion is an inspiration to Everstones. Those leaked models had me worried that they were gonna go and botch Typhlosion in 3D for a second time. Samurai Decidui just wasn't enough to keep me on the Rowlet side because Cyndaquil was looking much more grabbable. No one starts hanging out of tornadoes and evolves into what everyone seems to agree can only be called high flosion. And it's not just giving off ghostly flames on the shoulder blades, it's got a whole collar going around it. Cyndaquil this entire time had the potential to chong its way into getting the ghost type. Evolves from Quilava after taking one too many rips off Galarian Weezing. Very different strand of Scooby Snack than Arcelona's eating to get this form. Gonna need a professor who specializes in getting Pokemon on the bud. I mean why stop at that? Just hook him up with anything that gets him a bit lit. Must be plenty of research to be done on Pokemon who can down enough pints to just gain the fighting type. It explain why it's Crabrawlers and especially Grappolox only type. With a pint for each tentacle, your man's too dehydrated to be a water type. Growlithe is a good lad in its own right, but Zoroa here is the best Hisui house pet. Voltsor might have been my choice, but once I thought about it more, the vinegar disciplining, it was always gonna backfire. He'd be, he'd be rolling around the house, He's spilling it everywhere. It's just get it in the carpets. Hey, you can't get vinegar out of carpets. It's just not on, really. Zoroa is low maintenance. Don't have to roll it around the park every day, hoping it doesn't Harvey Dent a kid. Zoroa doesn't. He doesn't even want to be here. He hates humans. Barely even likes other animals or Pokemon. He pretty much have a cat. It definitely wouldn't be living that no XP Gumi lifestyle though, because his Sui and Zoroark. Undisputed banger. By far the most worthy Hisuian of getting that fully rendered cutscene of a trailer to get the hype going. The 2D artwork especially makes it look it makes it look almost too good for Pokemon. From looks alone, there's only one creature I'd expect to be fighting this, and it's not a Pokemon, it's not from Pokemon. It's from Okami. If Zoroark were like this from the very beginning, maybe it would have actually worked out at being the golden boy of Yanova, Gen 5's Lucario. In an alternate universe, this trailer was for Zoroark's Smash Bros reveal. 
Beta Quillfish had an evolution, so it's about time they got around to not leaving that one in the drafts. You'd easily convince me Quillfish's kind did more damage to Homer Simpson than they have any actual Pokemon, and even then, it had to take the L to be knocked out in the first place to then be cooked and consumed for it to do any direct damage. It needed not only a form, but a fresh evolution to salvage that. Over Quill, same guy who came up with names like Execute and Pig Knight, he must be buzzing. Simpsons would have had about 30 less seasons if that all you can eat fish bar served up an overquill. And that's assuming it let you get anywhere close to taking it down and serving it up on a dish. Looks tailor made to avoid being on coastal town menus. And even if you did want to cook one, how are you going to go about consuming that? Not even Ainsley could salvage up a non-lethal meal out of him. Looking like that one enemy Kirby couldn't even scran on. Kirby's eating BMWs these days. What chance do you have eating this? This right here. Easy S tier use of regional forms. The potential of Quillfish was always there, but now it's finally being as weaponized as it always should have. Overquill comes very close, but the top one from the series still has to be Basque Legion. The deceased souls of the ones who didn't make it upstream possessed Basculin. How dangerous must Hisui be for evolution to kick in post-mortem? Your animalistic instinct after death is to merge. Must become one with the big fish. I might not have survived making it upstream, but I could still make a difference as the ghostly Megazord known as the big fish. Basque Legion is pretty much Basculin Valhalla. This is your afterlife, swimming about forever, starting on all the other fish. The little Basculin, they're all probably loving it in there. Can see why it's extinct these days. None of them are getting deceased, only the occasional fainting, because they're all cozy swimming down the Unova region. Again, that American lifestyle is making you all soft. The deep waters of the Hisui region were clearly keeping them on fire. None of them care about Valhalla down your Nova. They, they've got their wasted Mackies or Arby's. Whatever America has getting chucked in the seas for you Basculin to scran on, making you all cushy. No coincidence, Basculin legions only ever existed at the same time as Overquill. And your Nova's got to get that Basculin body count up. You plant a few Overquills into your Nova's ecosystem and their legions will be spawning up again real soon.